how many times have you ever seen one stone skip? Whoa. His dud is my best throw ever. The most I ever skipped verified was 88 times. And that currently is the standing world record for about the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. 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 Meet Kurt Steiner, a world champion, Guinness World Record holder, and master of the physics of stone skipping. Stone skipping is not big enough to support anybody's lifestyle, even mine. <laughs> it's a labor of love and a hobby passion. I entered my first tournament in 2000, and that's kind of where I got serious about it. Kind of stuck with me for the last 20, 25 years. And it's caught some people's attention, including Wired Ourselves in 2019. <sighs> And every time Kurt goes to throw, he has to consider five things. Speed, the faster you throw it, the more speed it has. The spin is how fast the rock is spinning. You can change how fast it's spinning by your delivery and how you hold the stone as well. The tilt angle, if this is the front, then the tilt angle is how much of this you add to the stone. The attack angle is from where you let go to where it hits the water. The twist angle is a, like the roll in an airplane and it plays into distance throwing and wind conditions. Interestingly enough, when it comes to a lot of the numbers, I'm not the guy who pays attention to it. How many skips was it? I don't know. You're the judge. I'm just here to throw. When I come up to the shore to throw a stone, the three things I'm looking at are the wind direction. I try to keep it to my back. The breeze from behind helps so you can release it more horizontally. The water surface, there's no real pattern in it. The most you have is a kind of random distribution of tips. They can actually keep the rock riding up on the water. And the other thing you look at is your footing. Is it sloped? Is it slippery? Is it sand? Is it dirt? Are you skipping off a rock? So, oh, uh, fallen in, broke my kneecap, all kinds of, yeah. If your plant foot goes, you're just out of control. So I'm using a set of thin, light rocks, and I'm gonna throw in what I call a whip delivery. I will be pulling down and then driving up against that as I torque, and that'll snap my hand out. I'm gonna be trying to land close and get a dense skip pattern here. Something to that effect, if you can see it. Oh. What happened there was my uh, twist was a little bit off. I came in with a little too much of this angle and it bit the water instead of skipping off the back edge. I'm trying to really land it close here. There we go. So now I probably didn't land but 10 feet out in front of me. So now I'm gonna switch up to a little heavier stone, but I'm gonna be throwing more horizontally across my body. This gives you a little more velocity and a little more depth. As a caveat, I will say I'm still in physical therapy from shoulder surgery. <laughs> So um, don't tell my doctor. At the core of it, to me, stone skipping is really just an appeal to get outside. Don't take my word for it, just do it. A lot of people know it, but don't do it because they don't think they have the time. Make the time for it, it'll pay off. I think what's not understood is how impressive it can be when it's taken above the level of a picnic. A simple thing through a mastery becomes a really visual, spiritual kind of art form. It's a way of making joy out of nothing. And that can't be valueless, <laughs> right? <laughs> Here I am. This is where I get most of my stones. Southeast shore of Lake Erie. Lots of shale on the cliffs. They fall out, they get polished up. They make skipping stones. Like here, see that? That caught my eye. Look how flat that surface is compared to the rest here. So the next thing I wanna do is flip it over and hope it's still good, and it is. So right there, we have the makings of a really good rock. It's flat, it's got a little bit of a curved top. This edge right here is not too aggressive. It's not so sharp that if I drag my finger on it, it'll hurt me. This stone demonstrates sharp versus soft my terms, but it happens to have split so that the top surface here is rounded and the other side has a very sharp transition from the face to the side. So if I were throwing in rougher water, I might consider throwing the soft side down because it can kind of run over those ripples a little more efficiently, like a bigger tire wheel. However, any truly sharp stone is uh, a bit of a slot machine, <laughs> right? Because even a millimeter of a water ripple looks huge to the stone. This is oversized, but I just happened to see this. If, if this was a skipping stone, you see this lobe here, and you see how this angle here is, is a sharper angle 
then from here around this way. If you think of that like the, the tooth of a saw, if it's spinning this way, it's going to bite more. If it were spinning this way, it's what I would call feathering. The tip follows the rotation. If I was right-handed, this is perfect because the tip is following my natural spin. But if I was left-handed, now I'm spinning it this way and it's gonna bite. So you can always convert a rock from right-handed to left-handed by flipping it over. The problem is sometimes the bottom surface isn't the one you want down. So stones can be very conflicted. I think the most prestigious stone skipping requires you to learn why you want a stone. And that means you need to be able to select from infinite variety and know how to predict what it's going to do based on your experience and your understanding of the mechanics of it. Here we go. This is a pretty bad rock. You know, if I had to pick which side is up, I would want to go this way. But if I do, it's got a tooth, so that's bad. If you were in a boat and you stuck your hand down, that's kind of what this edge is gonna do. Every time it comes around, it's gonna grab the water. I have some correspondence with some pretty high power physicists, and I swear I have told them some things that they actually kind of frowned at me at. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I believe that there are certain things I discovered in stone skipping behavior or object skipping that you know other people come out and say, look what we discovered, and I'm like, I told you. Kurt's understanding of the physics of stone skipping led him to the world record, and also a years long rivalry. Most of the uh, stone skipping now kind of picks up around 2013 ish. But for 10, 12 years before that, Russ Byers and I were also kind of having this go round. So back in 2000, we were in the same tournament. I edged him the first year. Second year, though, he got in. And then for the next decade, we kind of sharpened each other up. You know, we were rivals. But then the movie was made, uh, Skip Stones for Fudge, and we shared a hotel room in Boston. What I liked about Russ is I could just talk to him bluntly, and he would answer me bluntly, and none of it would get personal. And from that day on, we were like really good friends. Yeah. Unfortunately, he, he did succumb to cancer very shortly after that. So it was not long after I felt like I'd had this breakthrough I was always kind of a standoffish social person anyway, so for him to get into me that way was a, a major <sighs> event in my life. And so when he died, uh, so shortly after I felt like that was breached, it just made me sad. But it shows you the power of connection that can happen when these kinds of minds get together in this kind of activity. It's a beautiful thing. continually tries to expand the community he loves and teach new people about rock skipping. So he took me out on a chilly Pennsylvania afternoon and tried to teach me how to throw like a pro. Well, I'm gonna give you a stone here. And the first thing we do when we're doing this is just figure out where are you gonna hold that? I like to see what you do naturally or naively and then we'll go from there. I would do something like this. Kind of looking at it and you're looking at it for basically your pointiest point. So that's a possibility, but I kind of like that one. See that little bump there? Uh huh. Put that like right in the middle of the pad of your pointer. There? Yes, that's okay. about right. Also, can you get your thumb up on top more? Let there? that rest more in your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, first of all, just holding it roughly like that, just see how it looks when you throw it. Okay. Whoa! There you go. See, the grip already, you're underway. That's so much farther than I've ever done. So now, the only thing I'm gonna say to do it a little different uh -huh. is just squeeze a little bit harder and maybe lower the front edge of your stone down just like maybe about there. Okay. See what that does. And let it rip. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah, it's pretty good. So Wendy, you're halfway to being a pro. Practice and experimentation, paying attention to what you're doing and adjustments won't be long. You'll be a, an addict. <laughs> Kurt's love of rock skipping is a constant in his life. And the act of throwing is its own sanctuary from the world. When I'm standing there and I'm either about to throw a rock or I have been, it's one of those stop time things. You kind of feel alone, but not in a lonely way. To me, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of forgetting. It's forgetting how you got there, why you're there, what you got to do when you leave. When I was real small and I was throwing, I used to project myself into the stone. Like I couldn't surf, but I could surf as a stone. I guess one thing I don't do is think about how I'm thinking when I'm standing up there. <laughs> it's just, I feel it and let it go and it's all good.